Savati. Bhikkhus, I will teach you dependent arising and I will analyze it for you. Listen to that and attend closely. I will speak. Yes, venerable sir, those bhikkhus replied. The Blessed One said this. And what bhikkhus is dependent arising? With ignorance as condition, sankhara arise. With sankhara as condition, consciousness arises. With consciousness as condition, name and form arise. With name and form as condition, the six sense spheres arise. With the six sense spheres as condition, contact arises. With contact as condition, feeling arises. With feeling as condition, craving arises. With craving as condition, grasping arises. With grasping as condition, becoming arises. With becoming as condition, birth arises. With birth as condition arise decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair. Such is the arising of this entire mass of suffering. And what bhikkhus is aging and death? The aging of the various beings in the various orders of beings, their growing old, brokenness of teeth, grayness of hair, wrinkling of skin, decline in vitality, degeneration of the faculties. This is called aging. The passing away of the various beings from the various orders of beings, their perishing, breakup, disappearance, mortality, death, completion of time, the breakup of the aggregates, the laying down of the carcass. This is called death. Thus, this aging and this death together are called aging and death. And what, bhikkhus, is birth? The birth of the various beings into the various orders of beings, their being born, descent into the womb, production, the manifestation of the aggregates, the obtaining of the sense bases. This is called birth. And what bhikkhus is becoming? There are these three kinds of becoming. Sense sphere becoming, form sphere becoming, formless sphere becoming. This is called becoming. And what bhikkhus is clinging? There are these four kinds of clinging. Clinging to sensual pleasures, clinging to views, clinging to rules and vows, clinging to a doctrine of self. This is called clinging. And what bhikkhus is craving? There are these six classes of craving. Craving for forms, craving for sounds, craving for odors, craving for tastes, craving for tactile objects, craving for mental phenomena. This is called craving. And what bhikkhus is feeling? There are these six classes of feeling. Feeling born of eye contact, feeling born of ear contact, feeling born of nose contact, feeling born of tongue contact, feeling born of body contact, feeling born of mind contact. This is called feeling. And what bhikkhus is contact? There are these six classes of contact. Eye contact, ear contact, nose contact, tongue contact, body contact, mind contact. This is called contact. And what bhikkhus are the six sense bases? The eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, the mind base. These are called the six sense bases. And what bhikkhus is name and form? Feeling, perception, volition, contact, and attention. This is called name. The four great elements and the form derived from the four great elements. This is called form. 
Thus, this name and this form are together called name and form. And what, bhikkhus, is consciousness? There are these six classes of consciousness. Eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness, mind consciousness. This is called consciousness. And what, bhikkhus, are the sankhara? There are these three kinds of sankhara. Bodily sankhara, verbal sankhara, mental sankhara. These are called sankhara. And what, bhikkhus, is ignorance? Not knowing suffering, not knowing the origin of suffering, not knowing the cessation of suffering, not knowing the way leading to the cessation of suffering. This is called ignorance. Thus, bhikkhus, with ignorance as condition, sankara come to be. With sankara as condition, consciousness, etc. Such is the origin of this whole mass of suffering. But with the remainderless fading away and cessation of ignorance comes cessation of sankara. With cessation of sankara, cessation of consciousness, etc. Such is the cessation of this whole mass of suffering. Namaste. So there you have it. Those are Buddha's definitions for the 12 stages of the descending mode of dependent origination. So I think they're pretty straightforward and clear. The only one that might require some explanation is name and form, which is the next one up for our detailed uh, examination of the process. Name and form is an aggregate. Both name and form have subcomponents. In the case of name, there are five. Attention, intention, perception, feelings, and sankhara. And in the case of form, there are four. Well, five if you count space. <laughs> The four states of matter, solid, liquid, gaseous, and plasma, also known as earth, water, fire, and uh, earth, water, air, and fire. So these forms, these elements, or these states of matter gather together in various compounds, and we call this form. Huh? But really, it's only a nominal form because the reality, the Dhamma, uh, is the elements. The form is just temporary. For example, clay is earth. Pots are only made of clay. But the clay exists before and after the pot is made and before and after the pot is broken. So similarly, the elements in this body, for example, exist prior to the formation of the body. They come together in certain configuration, a certain aggregate, as the Buddha calls it, for the duration of the body. And then when the body is finished, those elements still remain, but they go back into their native forms. So, in the same way, name isn't a real name, it's just a formal name. We give a name to a particular form. But what we're really talking about is a complex, a gestalt, an aggregate of perception, attention, intention, feeling, and sankharas. So, when we look at something, when we experience something, we give it a name. Uh, like my glasses, these are my glasses, right? <laughs> That's the name. But the actual form is various compounds of earth, which are put through some kind of a molding and grinding and all kinds of other processes to put it into a certain form 
that has a function. And we give the, really the name is the function. If the glasses fall or, you know, get crushed or something, then they become useless as glasses. Then what do we call it? <laughs> Trash. We call it, I got to go down and get a new pair of glasses. <laughs> so the name that we give things is really just a formal name. It's arbitrary. It's an abstraction. It really has nothing to do with the thing itself. And similarly, the, uh, the nominal form that an object has is just an impermanent, temporary arrangement or aggregate of the material elements. And when that function is finished, then they all go their own ways into another form. So you see, one of the wonderful things about Buddha's teaching is that impermanence and timelessness and no self, as well as suffering, emptiness, and so many other con uh, concepts that lead to liberation are embedded in the very definitions of the terms the Buddha uses. So simply by talking about these things, we gradually realize the meaning of them. See, the Buddha never claims, <laughs> my teaching is the absolute truth. No. He never claims that his teaching is right or that it's permanent. In fact, he admits that it's a fabrication. But it's a fabrication that leads to the end of all fabrication. You see, if you adopt these views, they will bring you, they will incline you towards liberation, towards formlessness, towards emptiness, towards freedom. Whereas if you ab adopt certain other views, like eternalism, <laughs> objectivism, and so on, huh? the, a theistic view of the universe or a scientific view of the universe, they incline towards rebirth and suffering. So it's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's not really about trying to find the absolute truth of anything. Because what about the fact that the universe is an illusion? So it, does the question, is this true or false, have any real meaning? I don't think so. But what does have meaning is that from ignorance as condition comes sankara. Some, from sankaras as condition comes consciousness and so on and so forth. And when ignorance ceases, when we see as it really is this process, the Dhamma, dependent origination, dependent arising, paticca samupada, when we see it as it really is in life, it applies to everything. In the previous video, I went over how simply reaching over and getting a drink of juice is a whole process of dependent arising. So everything is like that. And we should develop the ability and train ourselves to see it in everything. See, this process inclines towards self-realization. So in other words, if we simply remain in that uh, view, in that mood, uh, it's not that the view is the truth. The experience that comes from the view is the truth. And that's the real Nibbana. That's the real liberation, the real enlightenment. Buddha Saranai. <laughs>